This episode brought to you by Calm, the app designed to help you ease stress and get the best sleep of your life. Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to. Well, it's after Christmas, but it's still December. Got any expired Christmas leftovers? It's no other time I'm reviewing it. From the director of Teen Wolf, huh? And Beethoven second. That's more like it! Home Alone 4, Taking Back the House, was the first Home Alone film to be released straight to television and DVD. They took away all the actors in the last movie, so I guess it figures to take away the actual theaters next. A plan Warner Brothers would soon cling to. I really had no interest in looking this over, but being in that emotional purgatory between Christmas and New Year's, I guess I should give the people what they, well, not want, because nobody wanted this, but let's say cautiously asked about. Let's wrap up this year with what I wish was the end of this series. By kinda demand, this is Home Alone 4. Always a good sign when that's the first name you see. Unless there's an and or a with on top, that does not bode well. But don't worry, it gets better. You know how in the last movie they couldn't get any of the cast back, so they just wrote new characters? Well, say hello to Kevin McAllister, everybody! Oh yeah, and that's Buzz, and Mom, and Dad. And Viv's transition floats smoother than this! Alright, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Last Christmas. Yeah. A shame the rest of the family died in the Bermuda Triangle. We should have made the film about that. We're gonna do all the same things we've always done. Sing Christmas carols, put cookies and milk out for Santa. God, that's just how I remember Catherine O'Hara's character. I'm sorry. It's too late. I'm sick of being everyone's favorite joke around here. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to be the youngest. Everyone in this family hates me. Then maybe you should ask Santa for a new family. What the hell's going on? I mean, what the hell is going on? Oh, and here's a fun addition. The mom and dad are divorced. Well, I know you miss your dad. When people are married for a long time, they get into kind of a rut. Christ, I would believe any one of these family members would separate except these two. They were literally the only ones who seemed to like each other. It's like saying Gomez and Morticia split because they were too gloomy. There's so many reasons that doesn't work. Dad! Hey, guy! Dad does drop by, though, to talk to Kate privately. Well, you know, uh, Natalie and I are living together. Marry her. Jesus, Kevin doesn't even look that much older. How much time has passed for all this to happen? What, was he flirting with a flight attendant when they forgot Kevin the first time? You want the kids for Christmas? Just a couple of days. He wants to take the kids over Christmas to know their new stepmother better. Because God knows they don't have enough emotional issues in these movies. And they randomly reveal this. There's a royal family coming to visit. You might have a chance to play with a crown prince. Where did that come from? It's like saying in passing, oh, by the way, Buzz is an alien. You don't just drop that in. Speaking of which, the kids turn him down, leaving Buzz in charge of babysitting, forcing Kevin to do all his chores. I hate Buzz. I wish I didn't have a brother or a sister. Well, you don't mean that. I wish I was an only child. Am I going to have to apologize for calling Home Alone 2 on original? There's copy and pasting, and then there's just cloning. How many times can somebody do something and not learn any lessons? David Madden, Lisa Denberg, and Mitch Engel. While his father's busy being in the James Bond movie, French Stewart playing Marv. Yep, Daniel Stern's part. Scopes out the place with his wife Vera, played by Missy Pyle. You sure we can pull it off? I mean, without Harry making the plans? Look where Harry's plans kept landing me, huh? In jail. Aw, looks like the McAllisters weren't the only ones to go through a divorce. They plan to kidnap the prince when the royals arrive, and at the same time, Kevin runs away from home to stay with his dad. Yes, I'll do another Emmerich movie. Oh. This is Prescott, played by Eric Avari, who's head of security, and introduces Kevin to his future stepmom. This is a smart house, Kevin. It does whatever you tell it to. Fire out. Hmm. Movie good. I, have a feeling. I will give credit. If I was a kid, I would totally be in love with this room. Think you'll be comfortable here? Thanks, 
Natalie. This is going to be the best Christmas ever. All my other mom gives me is unconditional love. You have PlayStation Pie! Speaking of which, Kate finds out Kevin left for his father's house and is quickly okay with it because the movie needs to happen. Breakfast time. Anything special you'd like? Anything? I'm sorry, we're in the wrong Culkin sequel. This is clearly Richie Rich Tax Audit. The dad and stepmom have to head out, leaving Kevin alone with Prescott and the maid named Molly. Can you make a milkshake? Here, chocolate. Do you think we'll have a white Christmas? What's this thing? It's called a dumb waiter. Why is it called a waiter? It carries food. Why is it called dumb? This is less like Kevin and more like that kid that was confused for Kevin, which I think was the alternate title of this movie. Hey, Molly, what you doing? Cleaning the house. Gross. Oh, no, no. Not in this house. Actually, I think he was talking about that sculpture. Nobody batted an eye when they put that on set? Maybe it's symbolic of the franchise saying, yes, you may do me right up the ass. Hey, didn't Kevin lip sync in one of those movies? I don't care, it pads out a few minutes. I feel nice. Can the rest of the movie be watching whatever's in the lower right? I think it's Rob Zombie's version of Little House on the Prairie. Coast is clear, let's go. Meanwhile, Marv and Vera get ready to sneak in to get the layout of the house before kidnapping the prince the following day. What do you think, Vera? We're just gonna go in there tomorrow and start grabbing kids? Ooh, everybody get in the van! Did the writing always sound this ooey, or is it just because French Stewart is saying it? Kevin spots them and, like the audience, can't believe what an unbelievable coincidence this all is. No, it can't be. It is! It's Marv! And Harry, presumably with a sex change, and she's making me feel things! Alarm? Oh. Prescott's doing a bang-up job looking after this place. Door open. Go close. I love this thing. Mom? Had the door been anywhere near me, that's how I would have reacted. Kevin sets the shower to fire hose, because of course that's a setting filling up the bathroom, causing it to burst open. And so help me God, I did kind of giggle at this. You! Hello, Marv. Is that the prince? No, that's Kevin. Kevin, Vera, Vera, Kevin. We have kind of a Bart Simpson, Sideshow Bob kind of thing. We've grown a lot over the years. But the house literally flooded with reasons not to come back. He says he'll come back. I'll be back! And the folks return home. They, of course, don't believe Kevin because Prescott was on the most convenient of bathroom breaks. Just that serendipitous kind of day. And somehow get him to apologize for protecting the house. Well, do you have something to say? I'm sorry for the damage of your house. I do have more to add to that apology, but you'll have to follow this detailed map to find it. Kevin sneaks into the control room and finds the security tapes have been tampered with. And I swear to God I didn't edit anything here. This is how the scene is presented. What are you doing here? Tell me. Well, before being sucked into a Donnie Darko time warp, I did a Shrek scream that even for Home Alone 4 was pretty awkward. Nothing. I swear. Kevin, of course, suspects that Prescott is in cahoots with Marv and not the incredibly kind person who's like an angel named Twisty McShock Surprise. You do have an overactive imagination. My own son was the same as you at your age. A real handful. Yes, I have the greatest memories of my boys. Yes, he should be here in about three hours or so. Oh, Douglas, you made it early. Welcome to your dream. It usually takes you longer to get here, doesn't it? Oh, you've been listening to Calm, haven't you? That's right, your dream is going to be a sponsorship tonight, but it's well-deserved. One of the most powerful ways to improve your overall health and happiness is to get a good night's sleep. But if your daily routine has changed, it can be hard to fall and stay asleep. That's why this dream sequence is excited to partner with Calm, the app designed to help you ease stress and get the best sleep of your life. When you relieve anxiety and improve your sleep, you feel better in every part of your life. Look, a unicorn! That's nice, you usually dream about suffocating in snap bubbles. I bet that's because you chose one of the best selections from Calm. Calm has a whole library of programs designed for healthy sleep, like soundscapes, guided meditations, and over a hundred sleep stories narrated by soothing voices like Stephen Fry, Kelly Rowland, and Laura Dern. Over 85 million people around the world use Calm to take care of their minds and get better sleep. Oh no, you're back in school. Just kidding, you're in the sky. Nice, you have Calm to thank for that. And if you go to calm.com slash nostalgia, you'll get a limited time offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of programming. You deserve your sleep and pleasant dreams. Calm can make it happen. Would you like to be a potato for a minute? That's cool. Be the potato. Get the Calm app and experience a transformation in the way you sleep. Go to calm.com slash nostalgia today. Be the potato.
Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them. Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. So Kevin tries to figure out what to do with criminals saying they're gonna return to the house and one definitely living there with him. Oh, I mean, he, uh, hates how boring Christmas is. No friends, no fun, no snow. This is definitely going to be the worst Christmas ever. You texted and drove writing this, didn't you? But his dad knows how to fix the problem. Trimming the tree! You know, for a smart house, there sure are a lot of dumbasses living inside. Evangelista's in town. Margaret's just throwing together a little impromptu supper, but we shouldn't go, should we? The stepmom gets called out by friends, allowing Kevin and Dad to talk about fun things like divorce. Adult relationships are just complicated. I know all about the inner child, Dad. Who wants to be in a nice car when you're all alone? You should think about leaving this woman while we take advantage of her incredibly expensive hospitality. Everybody in this is a monster. They find out the next morning the tree's been changed by the stepmom to get ready for the party, so the father lets him open one gift early as an apology. A listening device, is that cool? Yeah! Christ, why don't you just give him home security the toy? These films are so subtle. It looks like the rest of the family drops by to give Kevin his special teddy bear. Yeah, a kid with a rifle who sets traps would totally still have one of those. Teddy is this transitional object. Transitional object. Something very, very special child carries with him everywhere. That's why he left it at home. Did you even read your damn script? Kevin thinks, oh, possibly Teddy might want a little fresh air, right? So he rolls down the window and out flies Teddy. He was ballistic. He was you know, forcing this woman to feel like a third wheel is making me fall in love with you again. That's what we were missing, our shared love of spreading misery. Later that night, they go to pick up the royals as the staff set up for the party. Marv and Vera disguise themselves to sneak in. It's the Bartlers! Ah, Mr. Prostock! Ah! Yeah! In hindsight, I had days to prepare for this, but calling the police before a crime is not my strong point. He escapes into the suddenly empty kitchen and traps Prescott in the cold room. It looks like the royals' flight is canceled due to snow, so the stepmom decides to announce their engagement to still make it a memorable party. I know we were gonna wait till after your divorce was final, but it'll make tonight so special. Well, if it makes you happy. Yes! <laughs> happy wife with millions of dollars. Happy life with millions of dollars. Marv and Vera get ready to nab the prince in a bag, but decide to test it out first so stuff can happen to them. Let me down easy! I always do, baby. <laughs> ah! She's bleeding internally. Wily Coyote will be looking at this saying that's not how gravity works. The parents return and Kevin is a friggin' ballet ninja now, hitting the crooks with a pan and dumping food on them. God, the Force Gump Feather wouldn't fly around as much as these two. Oh look, they thought Prescott was an ice sculpture. I know the line between slapstick and horror is very thin, but God, I wish I was in the parallel universe where this was a horror film. Kevin! Think we dipped into that dimension for a second? Once again, nobody believes Kevin, and his father thinks he's trying to sabotage his relationship. You're out to destroy my relationship with Natalie. What? I want you to go to your room and think about what you've done. Every test screening card said the same thing. I guess somehow every movie got It's a Wonderful Life in there. Kate clearly crying because it's not in Spanish. And Kevin calls so he can watch it with her. Uh-huh, every eight-year-old loves It's a Wonderful Life. So how's your party? Are you having a good time? Yeah, it's all right. Trying to stop an abduction is pretty blasé by this point. Later that night, the stepmom comes in to give some kind, loving words. If you ever do anything like that again, you'll be out of this house so fast your head will spin. For Norma Bates. So your father's getting divorced. Boo-hoo. You better not cross me. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Oh, that's not a lullaby. I'm saying don't fuck with me. For once in this film, Kevin actually prepares for the crook's return, and Big Shock sets traps everywhere. Oh boy, it's gonna be a crazy night. Cut to the next morning. Get some pages mixed up there? Where it looks like the dad and stepmom are off to pick up the royals again. But it's Christmas. You know how sometimes you gotta do things you don't wanna do? This is one of those times. A quote every actor had when doing this movie. The crooks, of course, try to sneak in again, so Kevin tries to dispose of Prescott first. At least now he knows to watch his back whenever Kevin's around a door. Worst security ever! Boy, am I glad to see you! The kidnappers are coming! He but bumps into Molly, who, of course, reveals she's the accomplice. You're the inside man? I'm afraid so. Hey, Mom! 
take his surprise since look out I'm going to surprise you. Surprise, I surprised you. She locks him in the cellar as well, and he and Prescott try to figure out how to escape. Oh, what inventive home alone way will they get out of it? A cell phone. Well, there goes that question. Perfect, man. Sure. You're the adult in this situation. He calls 911, or Buzz, just as helpful, who just keeps hanging up on him. Okay, so now they call 911. I'm gonna try calling your mom again. Can somebody people in this movie? It doesn't matter because the battery dies. Again, phenomenal head of security. But Prescott does finally get an idea to use the dumbwaiter. If you hate this job, why don't you quit? Jobs aren't that easy to come by. You shouldn't stay someplace you hate, just because you're scared. Life's too short. That's our equivalent of the old man scene crying yet. Kevin uses it to get out and naturally outwits the crooks. <laughs> it took longer than I thought to replace his audio with a Tickle Me Elmo. <laughs> Molly gets trapped in the elevator. Who the shit chases someone in an elevator? While the other two continue to hunt him down. <laughs> hey honey, let's reenact what you slapped me for suggesting on our wedding night. Spin faster sesame. Okay, the white is not good. Faster sesame! This clearly has a practical use, especially when alcohol is involved. They're violently launched into a very gentle jump onto a chandelier, and this might be the only fall to be legitimately funny. <laughs> Though it would have been funnier if someone was ended from that. <laughs> See if you understand this music choice. Their careers are somehow undead. Merry Christmas to all. Yes, wish Merry Christmas after Halloween music. I'll at least give credit to how bludgeoningly fast this wraps up. To all a good night. Good night. <laughs> Something about seeing an old woman's skull shattered by a blunt object, I have to admit, is a little funny. Everyone arrives home, so now thwarting evil is a family affair. Is everybody's bones made out of trampolines? The police arrest them just as the royals arrive. I'm her boss. Well, looks like you're gonna have to find a new mate. Are you having a stroke? The father splits up and decides to go back with his wife, and as a means to give thanks, the royals decide to spend Christmas with the McAllisters. You're going to be with them? <laughs> That'll show that stuck-up rich snob. Now back to our slightly less rich, but still very, very rich home for Christmas. Kevin even activates the snow machine, which we're only now seeing as a thing. I knew this was gonna be the best Christmas ever. Buzz, Megan, wanna give me a hug? Okay, I'll hug Kevin again. Who are you? I immediately wanna leave my wife for you. Christmas! And that was Home Alone 4. <laughs> How the fuck do you think it was? I guess it's good to see at least one of these straight-to-TV versions, if only just to see how bad they get. I think most people watching know not to raise their expectations too high, but that's also why it's puzzling that they put the McAllisters back as the leads. These clearly aren't the same characters in personality or appearance, so it's mind-boggling why they didn't just write new characters like in 3. I guess it doesn't matter, you know it's gonna be bad either way. Can you really get that angry at it? I guess not, but you can't really get many laughs out of it, either. I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it, so you don't have to! What do you think, Vera? We're just gonna go in there tomorrow and start grabbing kids? Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout-out, and the uh, shout-out today is another recommendation. Thank you so much for that. And it's a really cool one. It's called Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation. What this is, uh, this is changing the lives of children with cancer by funding impactful research, raising awareness, supporting families, and empowering everyone to help cure childhood cancer. Uh, this is hosted by Alexandra Alex Scott uh, in her front yard, which she raised $2,000. Uh, Alex was just four years old old and battling, hopefully I'm saying this right, a uh, neuroblastoma, uh, when she asked to give the money so doctors can find cures for all children battling cancer. Uh, since then, uh, they've, uh, uh, since that first stand, excuse me, uh, they funded more than a thousand cutting edge research projects at nearly 150 institutions in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, its supporters are propelling the world towards a future without childhood cancer 
everyone can make a difference and help find cures for childhood cancer. So this is just a really, really cool uh, organization. Just a great name too, and, and, and a really great story. So uh, definitely go check them out. They have a really wonderful website. I, I, I Definitely check it out. Uh, spread the word about it. Donate if you can. I know a lot of people are struggling, but uh, man, this is just such a good organization. They, they have um, uh, the top rating on Charity Navigator, so go check them out. Really great people, and thank you so much.